Let's go, people. You guys okay how are you guys doing with this whole pandemic god bless you all everyone who is under the sound of my voice i say that a lot it is hallelujah hump day and even though we're not in the building i'm not the only one there are churches all over the world the only way that we can come together is this way sincerely I am honored. God bless you. How are you? To everyone who is under the sound of my voice. I need you to click tag and share. That's right. Christopher Martinez said that sound in the back is so relaxing. Well, in the back of me, as you see, it's a very relaxing ooh, fountain. God bless you, Kevin Foshi. Foshi. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Michelle said, I'm holding on. She's in healthcare. I hope you are. Tanya Harden said, we're doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm okay. I'm doing pretty good. Shelly Ann, what's going on in Jamaica? Monica Miss Moni herself is watching. Patricia Robinson, how are you? Lisa J. Bryan, we're doing pretty good. Dawn, what's going on? Mommy good? Well, won't see my firstborn graduate high school. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a moment. Lindsay, Denise, it's good to see you. Alicia Everett, Cheryl Murphy, I owe you a phone call. You hanging in there? We're praying for you. We got the message. Timothy Hopkins, I know Roz Baraka shut down Brick City. I'm very aware of that. God bless you. I want you guys to just relax. So I said I'm going to do Bible study from here. Because we need to just relax. Tanya Yvette Dobson. The Dobson. Dobson. That girl is full of energy. God bless you all. It is time right now. Let's go to the word of God. I decided to have it here because I needed just a little bit of tranquility for you. Most of you are not in a tranquil environment because you have the children running about and you have things going on. So I said, what's up, Rock? I said, let me bring tranquility to you as much as I can. Now, you know, I am so honored because God is still faithful. He is still doing a magnificent work in the earth. And the doors of the church will be open. We're just following the guidelines. And we're doing what we have to do. To everyone who has suffered a loss, we are praying for you. The Car Chronicles movement at UD Church Charlotte, Pastor Jamila, and soon to be Apostle Fred, we are praying for you. That's right, AP and the entire Unity Church Charlotte. We are praying for you. Don't worry about it. Someone said, I'm worried about how I'm going to pay my first month's rent. I want you guys to understand that God sees this and he is going to do something about it. Uh, you know, Tamika just went up the timeline and she said, my son won't be able to see his graduation. Uh, my son is homeschooled, so this doesn't affect him. However, I have a nephew that was getting ready to go to the prom and he had brought everything. I love you too, oil, CC. Um, but but I promise you, he's, his heart is breaking in my family because Everyone prepared for this, but nobody prepared for the pandemic. But nothing comes by surprise to our God. Absolutely nothing. He's not shocked by all of this. Trust me. He's even prepared a way in the wilderness for us to be okay. Even the young lady that went up the timeline and said, I don't know. You don't know, but God knows. To each and every healthcare worker, I am praying. And I only know one thing, that God is still in the blessing business. His business never closed. Even if the world shuts down, God is still on the throne. And can you worship him 
during this difficult time. And I spoke it this morning. I'm going to need you to have a little bit more hope because God is still yet on the throne with 900 people under the sound of my voice. Please understand I'm praying. Bridget, you just said your daughter was laid off at the Charlotte Motel. We are praying for everyone. Please, Lord Renee just said my daughter is graduating too. But unfortunately, there will not be a ceremony. I do believe that some things are going to shift for us. And even though you may not see your daughter or your son walk across the stage, or even some of you, your heart is breaking because now um, I just spoke to an Uber driver early this morning. He said his mother passed in February and they just buried her because of the pandemic. And so this world is in disarray. Understand that they just had a prayer. Uh, um, it, well, it was supposed to be a press release for CNN, but unfortunately someone took it as an opportunity to plug um, his quote unquote um, good job in building the wall and healthcare workers from Mexico. That's not the time. It's the time for us to get as much knowledge as we can concerning this pandemic. It's not a time to divide. Even though we understand what's happening, we understand that we've got to come together as a people. What do we do and how do we do it? So that's what's important to us. I want you guys to go with me really quickly to the book of Samuel. Can you do that? Unity Church Charlotte. That's right. I am the pastor. And you guys better watch us because we are getting ready to be the pastors of such a fine church. It is the best place on the planet. It's called Unity Church Charlotte. And we are located at 2818 Queen City Drive, Charlotte, North Carolina. Our service times is Hallelujah Hump Day, Wednesday at 7 o'clock, which we are doing virtually. And Sunday at 11 o'clock, the doors of the church do open. But stay tuned because I've got to let you know when we can. Now, I'm going to say this as you go to the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel 16, please do that. People are asking me, can we please open up the doors of the church? I had a woman who I love very dearly. She says, I'm coming to the church with a hand on the hip. I can imagine her saying, I'm coming to the church. I need my daily dose of unity. I get that. As the pastor, I want my daily dose of the Holy Ghost too. But what we've got to do is we got to use wisdom. And we're going to do everything online. I myself will be preaching the word of God on Sunday. And I myself, with we have to limit it to maybe 10 people, will be preaching the word of God. So please. Go online and watch us. Let's go to the book of Samuel. I would say get your coffee, teas, and me. But unfortunately, I can't do that because it is Bible study. I'm dropping bars and I'm not even trying. I want you guys to know something. We're going to talk about something that is going to blow your mind because a lot of people are asking me so many questions and I'm doing my best to answer them. But I'm going to answer this specific one in 1 Samuel 16. Let me read for you because God has given me a very feng shui style in reading the word of God. Hear me. I want you guys to understand that God is still in the blessing business. Listen to this because God wants me to tell you something. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely God has anointed the people that stand before me. God bless you. God bless you, Sister McCall. God bless you. And so look at yourself in the mirror. If you can, if you're looking in any way, shape, or form inside of a camera, look at yourself and say, has God anointed you? And if he has, good. I'm glad you clicked on to the button because we're going to hear what God says. Now, surely the Lord has anointed those that stand here. But, that conjunction word. The Lord said to Samuel, do not consider the appearance of the people that you're looking at. Now I want you to click tag and share and say, I'm going to need you to turn into this woman of God because she's going to blow your mind and she's going to answer questions that you did not even think about. You're very beautiful too. Thank you for that. Only one gram. Thank you. And so you are looking at the appearance or are you looking at the height of a man? Now listen, I know that there is a song somewhere as Fred and I do our trivia called Don't Want No Short, Short Man. But most of you are overlooking a very short man that is very big in God. Some of you are looking at things that did not matter and maybe that's why you in that mess. He ain't fine enough. She ain't fine enough. They're not pretty enough. God ain't into that because I know a whole lot of beautiful monsters. I thank God I happen to not be one. And so God 
God is saying you're looking at the appearance. You're looking at the heart. For I reject those people that you feel fit the criteria. Okay. Oh, this is going to be good to me. And I'm not going to run and I'm not going to shout because I want you to hear the water in the background. Hello, Joyce, the boss. How are you? And so God is saying, why are y'all looking at stuff that don't matter? Why are y'all judging people by their appearance? Why are you judging them if they can give you a ride or not? Why are you predicating your faithfulness and your love and your condition based on conditions that God says is not relevant to how I love people? The Lord does not look on the appearance. People do. They look on the outward appearance. But God, what he does is he searches the heart. That's why I do not care for religion. I, I can't stand it. Someone said to me, Fred, he said, it's a righteous indignation when it comes down to people who come to, who come to you with all type of stuff that don't matter to God. I do. I get righteously indignated because you judge folks based on lipstick, long skirts, doilies, and prayer caps. Now, if you don't like it, please log off. Go somewhere else where y'all can touch and agree because you ain't going to get nobody that's going to agree with you right now. So hear me. He said, you're just judging things that don't matter did you know the word of God said really your heart and not your garment okay I can go to you but I'm not going to fight with you right now because I ain't got time too busy listening to the waterfall so Jesse called Abinadab and he had passed in front of Saul nah he looked good but that ain't it ladies oh ladies oh you better be glad God helped you dodge a bullet because baby he looked good but he wasn't all that. Amen. And so God said, no, that is not. Saul said, now listen here. Um, you sure that this ain't the one? Jesus said, nah, bro. That ain't it. Go and click someone that said, baby, you ain't it. Go on and click somebody that you, you're quarantined with. You're locked in the house. Maybe when this is in, when this is over, they possibly, this may be your last time you look at me and eat this baked chicken. So God said, no, that's not that. Well, Jesse said, now, listen, uh, Shema, bring him to me. Let him pass by. So, well, this is what happened. No. Sam, you said, this ain't it. No. This ain't it either. Because y'all too busy looking at stuff that don't matter. No. This ain't it. No judgment zone. Thank you, most the, the charade. Thank you. No judgment zone. This is why I like you to church. We're not a judgment type of a church. We only allow God to do that. It's our job to catch the fish. It's his job to clean them up. I'm so glad you're part of this congregation. No, that ain't it. Well, well, listen. It, it, do you got somebody else? I do. Now you done got two of my sons. What okay? Well, I need you to do. There's that prophetic number. Hear me. Seven is a very profound prophetic number. It means completion. Kim Rice, listen to me. Listen to me, Will and Grant. I'm praying for you. This is what the Lord is saying. Now, you mean seven of your sons are here? Yep. Seven? Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're no, 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 no. Those are not the ones. They're not fitting the part. Could tag and share and tell someone, nah, yeah, 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 no, that it, no, it ain't you. Hear me. The Lord said, I have not chosen these you have. Mm -hmm. Most of you are in a problem because you chose stuff that God did not ordain. Mm -hmm. Most of you are in situation because you said, God, I want you to bless this mess. Uh, knowing that wasn't God, that was you. Hold on now. Don't log off. We're going somewhere. Hear me. You picked the person. God said, no, I've been trying to give you the desires of your heart, but you keep allowing your flesh to get you in a way because he's got to be six foot tall. She got to be looking something like whatever it is that y'all choose. You got to have what pleases the eye, but God says, what about what's in your heart? Hear me. Listen to me. Now, what I want you to do, Jesse, I, now he's biting. Now, I'm going to set it up because most of you do not read the word of God with understanding. Hear me. God is saying, listen to me. Uh, uh, you don't have nobody else. He was almost looking at Jesse very puzzled. Like, okay, they look like they fit. Hmm? But these, this is it. See, there's somewhere a woman crying because she's not getting married. Ah! Most of you better be happy that they shut down the engagement hall. They shut down things because God says, I'm just giving you a little bit of time before you die. Okay. Most of you, you better be glad that, okay. Some things come to save your life, even if it hurts your heart. Yes, I see you in Chicago. It's a free event, August 28th. We're still on if God be good and, and everything is okay. 
Isn't it funny that most of us get involved with stuff that God himself is trying to snatch us away from? But because it's mm, 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 good. Yeah. Because they make your curl. Well, I don't know if they make your curl, curl or not. But isn't it funny that you choose folks that God himself disagrees about? Ha! But it's funny because your flesh is in the way. And Jesse said, you sure that these are not the one I feel that they are befitting? I feel that this is a good fit. What's up, Grand G? I feel that they're good for me. I'm so glad I'm good in that category. I feel, Joanne Williams is saying, Jesus, they're good for me. That's what you're saying. You're saying, hold on, there's somewhere a woman breaking her heart and shattering her dreams because you were supposed to get the ring, but he gave it to somebody else. And now you're saying, wait, hold on, I thought I was good enough. You did. You thought that you fit the... God said, hold on now. You thought that it was good for you. I'm getting ready to blow your mind with something better. Hey, hey. God said that's not who I ordained for you. Huh? God bless you, Mother Roberta. He said, now, I, I need to know something. Is there somebody else? Huh? Someone called me today and said, do you think that God has somebody specifically tailor-made for me? I said, yes, darling, because it fell on the pastor. It falls on the congregation. Relax, pull up a chair, and let's watch God. Hear me. And God said, now, there's someone else. Now, do you have someone else? It's the youngest one, I believe. Jesse said, What? You mean to tell me that this statuous young buck here is not the individual that you come for? No, it's not. He said, well, I got this young lad. Hmm? I got this person picked over. Oh, no, they got shot. Yeah, you got laid over. You was picked over. First hired. La okay. Uh -huh. First hired. First fired. That's the way it go. Hold on. You mean to tell me that they... No. No, I want you to look over the boss and go get the last because the last shall be first. I need you to look over. Look over and, okay, huh? look over does not mean that you're disqualified. It simply means that God is working things out in your favor. Hold on. Stay tuned. Where they at? Where they at? Hold on if Dylan's here. Yes. Where they at? What they do? Where they at? Well, God said, listen, Samuel, I want you to go sit for him. And set him down. He's somewhere tending the sheep. Uh, did you not say he's tending the sheep? See, folks that fit in, they don't even look the part. And they don't even smell like they even belong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hear me. I want to speak to the outcast. I want to speak to the one that was picked over. I want to talk to the one that was kind of ostracized. Those right now who have been the black sheep of the family. I want to talk to the one that was ridiculed. Yeah, you for a moment. Uh -huh. They looking at you like you a whole mess of things. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, you ever go inside of an organization Whether it be your family or your friends or whoever And they just look at you like you just smell Just with a whole stink look Just yeah You're the one You are tending the sheep <laughs> What I need you to do is bring him to me So what they did is they sent for him And they brought him Oh child Wow The glow is real the Bible says that he was glowing in health. It means, dang, yo, he fine. It's just like when I looked at my blessing for the first time, I said, oh, gosh, he fine. I could do that, y'all. Dum, dum, da, dum. Bam. Hear me. What I want you to understand that God is saying, now listen here, you gonna look right uh -huh, uh -huh, when I give the appointed time because what God will do, hmm, God's grace will glow you up. Mic drop. Oh, he fine. The Bible said that he was fine in appearance and he was handsome in features. Uh, all of you under the sound of my voice. Uh, yeah. The Lord said, now what I want you to do is rise up and anoint him. What? Rise up and anoint the one that y'all overlook. Huh? Rise up. And I need you to anoint the outcast. Rise up. And what I need you to do is take the ram's horn. So Samuel took the ram's horn. And he anointed him in the presence of his brothers. There go again. God will anoint you or all. Okay, hold on. Where's Joseph in all of this? There is something that I'm going to teach you about the anointing and the character of God. Mm -hmm. Because most of you don't understand what's happening here. God will anoint you right in the middle of a hater. God will anoint you uh, right in the middle of your family that said, uh, 
I ain't giving you nothing. God will anoint you in the middle of a family member that said that you would never qualify. You ain't better than me. That's sibling rivalry. We all understand it. Everybody has dealt with it. Go, okay, Gary, Gary is running. Well, fall and run, child. You can't go fall. We are quarantined. We are locked down. God said, that's the one, the last shall be forced now what he did because he took the ram's horn and he anointed the ones that looked upon looked upon and it did not even pour but the one that was hid and tucked away and looked over and wasn't enough god said that's the one he anointed him right in the middle of his haters right in the middle of his sisters that was jealous right in the middle of his brothers that was jealous right in the middle of everyone that overlooked you god says in the middle of this i am going to anoint you and appoint you in front of everybody stay tuned hold on and the word of the lord said david became a powerful 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 man samuel then went to ramah well, if you allow me for a period of time to tell you really quickly, you really don't fit. If I had to say it in another way or another verbiage, I'll tell you that you don't even fit. Have you ever had someone look at you and say, you don't look like you belong here? Have you ever had someone look at you and say, why are you hanging out with them? Have you ever looked at somebody in a relationship because sisters, you know good and well you do it. Brothers, you do it too. It's hard to get bad that. God, I'm glad that we mesh each other well, but have you ever looked at somebody that was with the wrong person and say they don't even look good together. God, have you ever been in a situation where folks scratch their head and say, how did you get here? I got up. If Deborah Cox was here, she would say, how did you get here? Nobody is supposed to be here. But God said, you don't even look the part because they ain't got the power to ordain you. Hear me? Oh God, this is good to me because I've got to slow down because I've got to teach you something. I've got to teach you a oh. Okay, I need you to get your pen and your paper. Can you do that? Because I've got to teach this thing. Someone said, my Lord, I received this message. Absolutely. I want you to teach yourself something because I'm going to give you the full knowledge and revelation and understanding about something. There is something called an anointing. Well, what is an anointing? An anointing simply means to pour. It means to pour. That's what anointing means. But you've got to understand the anointing and to be consecrated. To be consecrated means that someone has to give you a level of honor. God, that's why I always tell you that favor is fair. Because it is an anointing that God gives those who he honors. Now watch this. I want you to write the word down anointing. Can you do that? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, you really ain't supposed to fit in that job. You really ain't supposed to be with that person. You really ain't supposed to fit. You right, you ain't, because God says, I am going to anoint you and sustain you. When all this is over, you're going to see me working. Listen, there is something called an anointing. Anointing means to pour. Did you do that? Did you write that down? Write it down. Anointing simply means to pour. They do it with kings. They do it with prophets. They take a ram's horn. They do it when you become a firm as well. And they anoint you a position. God uh, God said, now I want you to do this. I want you to take Jesse's boys. Uh, and I want you to anoint the one that I choose. God, that's why it did not work. Because you chose someone that God did not appoint you or anoint you for. He me. Someone said, come on, pastor, now listen to me. The anointing means to pour. Most of you want God to anoint your mess. He said, I'm not going to do that. Hear me. He said, I've got better for you. Watch this. There is something that I need you to please understand what God is saying. Hear me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. There is something called character. I need you to understand that God's character Mm -hmm. is what draws the anointing of God. Hear me, huh? It simply means that your character speaks. Huh? The Bible said that out of the issues of the heart, mm -hmm. life speaks. Proverbs 4 and 24. God says that man looks at the outward appearance. Someone just went up the timeline. Huh? That got a problem. I'm a woman preacher. See, huh? you see how the devil use stupid folks all the time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I ain't scared. Hear me, huh? God already said huh? you are looking at the heart. Huh? Oh, God, you're looking at the outward appearance. You're looking at the fact that I got bundles and my lip gloss is popping, I got on lashes, and I happen to be a full-fledged female. But God said, no, I'm, I've appointed her to preach the gospel. Hear me. Now listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I want you to understand something. The character mm -hmm, that God says that he favors, it's the fruit of the Spirit. Now watch this. Most people who are in ministry wonder why they can't get ahead. Ooh, 
that hurt. Most people mm -hmm, who are absolutely doing this mm -hmm, right now, because everybody got to go online, huh, is wondering what is going on where I can't get maybe five people. Mm -hmm. There is somebody that God has appointed huh, to be anointed for this. Huh, God, huh? God says, what I'm doing in this season, huh? he said, I'm raising up the ones huh, who have the character to sustain the gift. Now I'm going to go deeper. Everybody has a gift. Hmm? The word of the Lord said the gifts and the callings are without repentance. That means that God gives us all gifts. Your free will allows you to utilize it. Now watch this. David was gifted to serve the two. When his brothers decided that they were not going to attend the sheep, they had to appoint someone. Huh? So what God said, I am going to give um, that position to David um, who had the fruit of the spirit um, that displayed the character to attend the sheep. Now watch this. So God says, I'm going to give you a gift to sing. Mm -hmm. The gifts and the calling are without repentance, meaning he gives you a gift. You choose to utilize it for his glory or not. He is never sorry he gave someone a gift. He is never sorry he's anointed someone. Now watch this. But he will also anoint someone to do a work for a season. God, huh? But they will not see the harvest or the labor. Now watch this. God said to Moses, I'm going to use you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use you. Now watch this. He anointed Moses. God in you. He anointed Moses to lead the people. God. Huh? But the character could not sustain him. He said, now what I need you to do, Moses. Huh? I need you to speak to the rock. 1,500 folks under the sound of my voice. So he said, what I need you to do is speak to the rock. Now watch this. I'm about to blow your mind. You could be anointed for something, but lack the character to sustain where you're going. God, meaning this, why don't I have favor? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the character of God. Mm -hmm. But you got the gift. God, why is it that I can't do that? Because you don't have the character of God. You lack the fruit of the spirit. Well, let me help you. It's love. It's forgiveness. You too jealous. You too jealous. Uh -huh. It's in your heart. I know it's there. Mm -hmm. hum humility. Compassion, man. Gentleness. Self-control. <laughs> what about honesty? Obedience. Hear me. Those are the fruit of the spirit that God himself says, I will give you double honor and not just anoint you. But I will give you favor mm -hmm. and I will consecrate you to elevate you. Hear me. Understand. Hear me. That God said to me, he said so many people lack the character to sustain the gift. God. And most of you, you don't understand. Why do you see people and they sing but they don't get far? Huh? Because they lack the character. It's here in the heart. Most people are preaching huh? and can't get 50 people to join the church because they lack the character. David was quick to repent. Well, how are you going to tell me that? This man killed a bit. Listen to me. I am. Okay. I am. Okay. Okay. Bathsheba. Baby. She bathing. Bathsheba is bathing. And he is looking out. He said, whoa. Who that? And she's. Who that? The Bible said that he saw her. And he was smitten. Knowing good and well that wasn't his booth at. The Bible said that. <laughs> he put the, Uriah in the front line. Because David desired something. I never go so. Yeah, Why would God anoint and appoint this man who was a man after his own heart? Ah, right about God, who unfair, listen to me, who absolutely loved women. The Bible said that he took Uriah's wife, who was bathing, put him in the front line, and took his wife. Well, I, I'm not sure. God anointed him from the foundation of the earth with a gift. That he wasn't going to give back in his error. Because understand God gives a measure of grace. That comes with the gift of God. God gives you grace. That gets you to the place where David understood. That he was quick to repent. When you have the characteristic of God. Grace comes with a gift. That allows you to quickly 
forgive. Forgiveness is part of the fruit of the spirit because most people don't understand. You can't get ahead with your gift because you lack displaying at least one. You're too busy being jealous. No, I'm happy. I'm <laughs> No, baby, that ain't it. I got Gary L. Gary is doing a dance. God says, no, you lack the character to sustain the anointing of God. 2,500 folks under the sound of my voice. The impact of it all is that God is searching your heart. He know if you're happy before you open your mouth. He know if you go plot somebody's demise before you get in the car and go to work. He know good and all go well the things that you're going to say and do before you sit up and tell that lie. Understand that God is saying many people have gifts, but they lack the character to sustain it. Why is it that you have folks, and they happen to sing, and some folks get elevated, and some folks uh, why do you think that there are some folks they can preach to a multitude and some will preach to maybe five. You gotta ask God, you gave me this, but God said everything was made for me, by me, and for my purpose. He said, I'm gonna ordain you for five, and see if you can be faithful over that uh, before I give you the multitude. Uh, but your character uh, will only even, okay, your, your character will get mad at the five uh, and say, God, it ain't fair. Uh, God says, listen, here, listen, here, uh, you don't lack uh, the compassion uh, for me to bless you uh, and take you to where you got to go. The Bible said that David was quick to repent. He was quick to say, I'm sorry. When you're too busy holding the grudge. Oh, this water nice. This water nice, Unity Church. Call Chronicles. You lack the character, and God says, I've got to put you through a process under the child. And y'all don't want the process. You want it fast. Now, God says, one of the fruits of the Spirit is self control. You don't like self control because you don't like to be told what to do. God, watch them now. I tell you to watch the fruit of the Spirit. You don't like instruction, but God said, He told David, What I'm doing is, I'm developing your character to sustain the gift. But I am developing you so you can keep the anointing pouring. God said, now, David, I'm going to need you to go tend the sheep. You got a problem with the sheep you attending, but you're too busy worried about somebody else's flock. God, you, okay, okay, let me just calm down because one of the things about the anointing, it breaks the yokes. You can talk about something all day, but I need you to understand how you're going through the process. Let me say it again because you put it up the timeline the way God gave it to me. Many are called. Off, you are chosen. Huh? Jamela says some just up and went. Huh? God says you don't even fit. Huh? What he does is he catapults and boomerang. Huh? The person that you don't like going to do it. Huh? The person that you say nah she can't preach. Huh? That's the one that's going to do it. The person that you feel lack the intuitiveness to be great. It's the one that God says, I'm already developing the character where you too busy talking mess about them. Yeah, were you too busy talking about her kicking her back and putting daggers in his back? God says, what I'm doing is I'm setting them up to bless right in front of your face. But you don't even look the part, they say. You you don't even look it. You, you wear ripped jeans and you wear, you know, you got, I think you preached in high, high boots. Did you do a cartwheel in the pulpit? They're looking at you right now saying that you don't qualify. I but watch God says when all this is over baby you gonna qualify I'm over qualified no you ain't God said allow me to shake some stuff up and would you just sit tight while I develop your character so you could sustain the blessings of God Emmy ah oh, they don't like you I get it 12 million views and still counting I'm not bragging I'm just telling you what it is you mean to tell me him See, it's funny because people always got something to say, Keisha Daniels. They do. They always got something to say about who you are, who you with, who are you with, what you doing, how you get that. They got something to say. I get it all. God says, let them talk because only thing that I want you to do, I want you to practice self-control and don't cuss them out. Don't do that. He said, what I'm doing is I want you to display the fruits of the Spirit. Forgive them. He said, love them. Show humility, compassion, but don't be no punk. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it with gentleness. I'm going to blow your mind in the middle of everybody that called you a castaway. You don't even fit. You don't. Most of you are trying to make stuff work that God himself said. That's never going to work. It's never going to fit. Oh, this water is nice. 
God said to me, he said, so many people desire stuff that they don't have the character to maintain. Huh? It's like giving you a car huh? or a Benz or whatever you choose right now, could tag a share. Huh? It's really imperative because you want God to give you stuff you ain't got the character for. God. And now you want to know why certain things ain't working because you don't know the difference between favor. Huh? You don't know the difference between being anointed, huh? but you don't even understand you ain't got the character to sustain it all. Character is a very big thing. It specifically means it's the thing that's going to help you when nobody's looking. Character will allow you to do things right when nobody is looking. Uh -huh. Character will say, I don't need an audience of 20. I don't need an audience of millions. Huh? I will preach to the pews. Hear me. Huh? I will be happy what God gave me. Huh? I'm so happy for this little tiny cake. Hear me. The Bible says that when Elijah knocked on the woman's door, she said that she had cake and oil and she was going to eat it and die. He said, no, you're not. What I want you to do is trust God. Huh? You're going to be first, but I don't have it. Well, God got it. Just give me the vat. She went and got the vat. She filled it up and it was an overflow. Huh? But she did not complain and say, hold on. You mean to tell me that you ain't going to give me a cold beef steak? See, that's why the Bible speaks about covenant. Uh -huh. It said, hold on. We don't have this problem. No, no, no. Fred and I will never have this problem. It says, don't covet someone else's spouse. Huh? And some of you ain't happy with the one you got, huh? oh God, huh? but you're too busy covering somebody else's. You don't know their story. Yeah, they look good on Facebook, but did you know they killed each other behind closed doors? Huh? You don't even have the enough audacity to thank God for the little bit of food in your cabinet. Huh? Character. Someone said, please explain to the people what character means. Well, I will, Miss Alexander. Character is what you do when nobody is looking. It is a morale or morality. It means spiritually and naturally you do what is right at all times. Does that make sense to you? It means that I don't need my mama to stay. My mama's deceased, but listen to me. Many of your children are home. Mm -hmm. Some of them them broke, you know, how they said in Cooley High, you know, my mama's break front. They done broke your break front. You're trying to cap it. They done already ran around house but you got that one child that says don't you do that you know how you got little big mama in your house it's that little girl that wish she she five years old but she big mama in the house or the little child that's a preacher and he like nine years old but yet still he tell an 18 year old no you mommy i'm gonna tell mommy that's what character is is doing what is right even when mommy and daddy isn't present and god says i'm present at all times he said i'm the god that god that looks high and looks low and see everything and you don't even want to do the right thing but yet still you want me to bless you are you crazy he says you don't have the character yeah ebony austin said it right he said can you please rebuild my character that's a very smart person going up the timeline most of you in this pandemic you need to ask god would you please rebuild my character do it like they purge me like hyssop that i might be clean because god said there was a hold on now wait a minute because we all know the first purge is on netflix right now did you watch it i feel like i made it myself but god said what i've got to do i've got to purge you but you won't even let me because you don't want to receive the truth my drop and in order for you to be purged you've got to receive the truth now you want to know why good and well someone said i'm seeding today you want to know good and well why that your gift ain't doing nothing for you it simply means because you won't allow god to tell you the truth because god will give you the truth and it'll come in the format of a friend it'll come in the format of a co-worker somebody that knows you've been trying to tell you the truth for a whole time they've been trying to tell you the truth you don't want to hear what they got to say god will send somebody along with the same situation and the same story telling you the same thing folks been telling you for years but you too rebellious such as witchcraft to let them tell you the truth hear me let me help you with something i'm gonna blow your mind the bible said that moses did not see the promised land i let it stop so what means this? It means that God will give you a gift and he will let you keep working and you don't even know you fine because he gave you a gift. If he said that everything was made for me, by me and for my purpose, even the one that's not operating the gift is still working, huh? but you won't get the promise. Hear me. God said, now I'm going to listen to me. Get up on Pinnell. Moses went up there. He said, now listen here before you die, I'm going to let you see it. Oh God, ain't that some tormenting mess? You mean to tell me that you're going to let me see everything that I work for, but I ain't going to get it? Come on now, God, that ain't fair. What? Did I not tell you that I know the heart of a man? 
I know that if I give it to you now, you're going to stop going to church. I love you too, Antoinette. I know that if I give you that now, you ain't going to speak to me no more. Ah, that's why we in this mess. I know that if I bless the world in its entirety one time in one shot, they going to stop. Moses, what I need you to do, I need you to see it. Moses sit on that now and he saw it. Watch this. Having a gift, but not having the character to sustain it. It's like somebody buying you a Bentley, put a nice bow on it, and stick it in the garage, but never give you the key. Huh? It means that you got to look at it every day, but you can't drop it. It means that you got to just look at the window. And God says, I can't give you that. I can't give you that because your character can't sustain it. You've got to go through the process. I never got stop. Nobody wants to go through the process. I got for the promise. David went through the process. Why does it say in the word of God that any of his brothers went through the process? They even went down to eat lunch and could not even get the. They could not even muster up the strength to talk back to Goliath, let no one fight him. But because David was being developed. In the sheep it's been because David stunk. He was in basic training. He was taking the jaw, killing the bear, slaughtering the lion in mess. And God said, character is developed in mess. And most of us don't want to get messy to sustain the character of God. You've got to put in the work. Thank you, Kevin. You've got to do the work. Why would I give you a degree? And you can't even study. My drop. Where's job? DJ K. Why would God give you a husband? And you can't even go to the kitchen. Why would God give you a wife? And you can't even balance a checkbook. Most of you don't understand. You don't fit. Not right now. But he said if you allow me to make you fit. It will work. And God says I will anoint you to do a great work. I will do that. I will anoint you to do a great work if you just allow me to process you. People say, what is she doing? Because I feel warfare right now. I'm sorry, people. Y'all don't understand it. Please let me do what I got to do. Most of you don't understand that God has something phenomenal for you. But you lack the character because in your heart you're too jealous of somebody else. Most of you, God says, I want to bless your socks off. 2,600 folks. But you're too busy secretly being judge, judgmental. Most of you, God says, I've got something so great for you, but you won't let me develop. So you're right, you don't fit. Simultaneously, this can work. You don't fit because someone's looking at you saying, no, you don't fit. But what about God saying, you don't fit right now because you're not ready? Can I develop you? Let me develop you. It's the developing process. Most of you want a beautiful body, but you don't want to go to the gym. Child, let me tell you something. Me and McDonald's are friends. But I got to let that go if I want to fit in the wedding gown. It's the process that's painful. I get it. This whole pandemic is painful. But when it's all over, ah, God says you're ready now. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong. But to the one that endures until the end. God bless you, Joyce Miles. It's the endurance that wins the prize. It's not the shortcut. Where is it in the word of God that David took the shortcut for anything? He did not. He took the shortcut when he got older. He said, now listen to me. This woman, I want her. God says, uh-uh. He was quick to repent. Quick to repent. He was so fast to repent to God himself was pleased. Most of you want stuff and you've been holding the grudge for five years. You've been looking at a person saying, well, how come she do that and I don't? Well, how come he got that and he won't? And why she won't that? And you in secret thinking that God don't hear every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Because it says, Proverbs, listen, Proverbs 4 and 24, the issues of heart speak right here. Read Matthews 12 and 34. It speaks about the gifts. The gifts and the callings are without repentance. He's not sorry he gave you your gifts. He's sorry you won't allow your character to get you in a position to utilize it for his glory. Hear me. 
God is saying, you don't fit right now, but you will if you allow me to make you over. I am Pastor Jamila. Know the difference. You could be anointed for a task, but lack the character for God to honor you with his favor. It's all on you now. I'll see you guys Sunday at 11 o'clock here live virtually. I want you to please go to Givelify. Please do it right now. You can go to www.unitycharlottenc.org to our website. I put it up. We even have Givelify for this is service because this is what is customary for us in our faith. We sow gift of tithe and offering, and I'm going to ask you to do that. If this is encouraging you in any way, shape, or form, understand we all are suffering, but the sacrifice is needed for everybody because it produces a seed of harvest. I am Pastor Jamila, and every time you click my button, baby, I'm going to tell you the truth. Please go to Give a Five and www.unichurchcharlottenc.org. I'll see you on Sunday. God bless you. Share this. I love you. Get your character right so the anointing of God will sustain itself and be great. Thank you.